What's up business builders here with another video in our our last video of this series um, we've been talking about how to build and maintain a magnetic culture in your business and this week the final video of the series we're talking about how to create leaders from within so when you start out in in your business um, you well, in the beginning there's only you and you're the leader right and you're the leader for what I believe you're the leader forever, but you can then create leaders within. And what that is, is that you're starting to pass the torch off so that way you can scale. And it doesn't mean that you remove your responsibility as a leader. What it means is that you actually just multiply um, because you, at the end of the day, you just can't be everywhere at once. You as the owner, the CEO, you can't talk to everyone in every minute. You can't see every little thing. Also, different personalities match up better with other personalities. So it's super critical that once you start getting bigger, thinking about how can I create leaders within. So I've got a, a, a little bit of a, a roadmap, so to speak, a formula. The secret recipe for one Krabby Patty is... Okay, and I'm gonna talk about each point. By no means is this an exhaustive list. There's lots of things that go into building leaders within your business. And I think it's a, it's a major art. The art of cultivating leaders is so critical and it's worth to me billions and trillions of dollars. So if you can learn how to be really good at this part, um, you write yourself basically freedom on your life. So let's start at the beginning. I think the very first step that I've, I've personally found is identifying potential leaders. So as you hire and, and bring people into your culture in your business, not everybody is going to be a, a leader. Not everyone's going to want to go above and beyond. Okay. And that's fine. Now, personally, I want in my culture, uh, oh, I only want people that, that are there to go above and beyond. So you, you decide the thermostat for your business, but for me personally, I still need to identify people. And so when I bring people in, I've got a little eye on them, right? I'm, I've got a close watch on some of the things they're doing, some of their actions and their habits and their attitudes. And it's these little things that start giving me th their little indicators along the way. You know, if a guy stays late when he doesn't have to, to help out, that's a sign. If you see somebody and they're, they're encouraging another person, that's a sign. Because remember, the two most important things of a leader. Number one, to be a great example. Number two, to be a great encourager of people around them. So I'm looking for traces of those two things. I'm looking for people being a great example and being a great encourager. And so if I start seeing those things, what I'm basically doing is I see the little dots and I'm just connecting the dots, right? So that's the identifying part. Next, once I feel like I've identified someone, by no means are they a leader yet. I've, I've got a lot of work to do with them. They have a lot of work to do on themselves, but I have looked at that person and said, hmm, potential. They have potential. So here's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna invite them to the leadership table. That's how John Maxwell explains it. I'm gonna invite them to, to start kind of getting closer with, with me in a relationship, meaning I'm gonna just to associate more with that that person. And uh, some people are like, well, you shouldn't have favorites in your business. It's not about favoritism, it's investing. Same way you invest money, it's just investing time, okay? The guy that just really doesn't care and he's just here to make, you know, 17 bucks an hour and dip, that's fine. Person that wants to hang out and they wanna learn more about how the company works and how to grow, I wanna spend more time with that individual. I don't invest more of my time and my resources and my knowledge into that person. Okay, so inviting them in, what does that look like? All that is, it can be a literal sense. Uh, you may just one day say, hey, Josh, you know, come back to my office for a couple minutes. And, and you're just sitting down and just seeing how they're doing. Hey, how's things going out there? And, and I find that it's super a great way is just to ask some questions like, hey, is there anything that you see around here that, that you think could be better? You know, what do you think about our culture? What do you think about our process for X, Y, Z? Do you think this is the best way we could do it? How do you think we could make the, the, the company better? Just these little questions. And what I'm doing is I'm inviting them to be a part of the conversation. 
The next step is connecting. Step three, connecting. So I want to get more on a personal level with them. I want to learn more about their motives uh, of, of why they want to grow their career. Maybe they have a family. Maybe they're looking to travel more. Maybe they're looking to provide more for their children. Maybe whatever, right? Um, maybe they got some parents that are getting up in age and they really want to start taking care of them. I don't know. Maybe they want to own their own business, right? There's so many things that it could be. So I want to start getting to know them more on a personal level. So start asking things about their family. You know, hey, you got any kids, right? Oh man, that's awesome. You got two kids. What, how old are they, right? And personally, uh, my memory is not, I think I've got a decent memory, but it's not uh, a, a sticky memory like some people. And so I may have a conversation with someone. I go back to my office. Like, I'm going to write it down on a sticky note or I'm going to put it on a note in my phone, these things, because I want to remember it, right? And it's important to me. So then three or four days later, next week later, I can see that person again and I say, hey, Josh, man, how's Candace and, and, and Bradley doing? And so what I'm doing is I'm investing. I'm working on my end to show that individual that I care about them. It's, it's the part that people bypass all the time because it's the easiest part not to do. Um, but it's the most important part to execute on. So connecting, that's number three. Number four, motivate. So once I've identified them, I've invited them in a little bit, I've connected with them, now I'm starting to motivate them. I am starting to take the things that are important to them. So the, the, maybe this this guy is like, man, you know, me and my girlfriend, we live in an apartment, we really like to buy a house. You know, I'd like to, I think that she's the one, like I want to I want to marry her, but like I, he's not there yet. And so... I'm gonna start motivating them. I'm like, hey man, here's why you should work harder. Hey man, here's why you should, uh, you know, hey, if you wanna pick up some extra work. Here's what it can do for you, man. It gets you one step closer to getting that house. Or you gotta have that down payment to get that house. Or maybe he's looking at proposing. Well, hey, a ring isn't cheap, right? And so begin motivating that person with things that you've learned through the connecting phase. And motivating can be intrinsic and extrinsic, but what we're talking about here is probably a lot, a lot of ex extrinsic motivation where you're you're talking about maybe physical things that they're working towards physical goals and from there the next step is equipping once i've uh, motivated them now they're like man i really want to do i want to accomplish xyz so now i'm i'm taking a little more responsibility on helping them get the skills and the tools to go get it what they want and so i'm going to need to spend maybe a little more time with them equipping them, getting them better at what they do. I want them to become a master at their job. I want them to be the best there is. Better than me, better than anybody else, the very best there is. Hands down, master at what they do. So equipping. After that, I'm gonna go to mentoring them. What I think the big mistake is, is people go from identifying to mentoring. <laughs> or like you're going from identifying and connecting and then you're jumping right to mentoring someone. It's a sacred thing to mentor somebody, in my opinion. It's a very personal thing, very personal. You know, the word mentorship gets thrown around a lot today on the internet, but it is a very intimate relationship when you're mentoring with someone. Uh, there has to be a lot of trust, a lot of communication, and a lot of honesty, and um, because there's a lot of truth that comes out in mentoring and you have to be on a really sound level with an individual to tell them that truth. And so mentoring is that next step. That is where you're, you're going to really start sharing with them things that, that maybe they don't do well or things they need to change or things they need to work on. But also while telling them what they are doing great. Don't forget that part. Right. Again, it's just more intimate. And in the last and final step, developing leaders within this last step is then duplicating, compounding. You can say it either way, duplicating and compounding. So I've went through this process. I've identified somebody that might be a leader. I've invited them in a little bit. I've connected with them, all right? I've motivated them. I've equipped them. I'm mentoring them. And now I'm gonna compound what I just did. So I'm gonna take these first six things, okay? These first six things. And I'm then gonna take this individual and I'm gonna show them how to do that with someone else. I'm gonna duplicate what we just did. That is the, the scaling effect in leadership in your business is when you can take someone and you've brought them through that process. There's no timeline to this, by the way. Uh, this could take years, it could take months. Everybody's different, but it's not a week. <laughs>
And I'm going to then show them how they could do that with the next person. And when you can do that over and over, they're really the sky's the limit. Everything rises and falls on leadership in business. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And so if you get really good at compounding leadership, what is there to stop you other than your dream not being big enough? And that's a whole nother video. Maybe we'll, we'll cut video on that. Maybe that'll be the next, the next series. The dream's big enough. The facts don't count. How big is your dream? Is it this big or is it this big? I believe that if you invest in these people, again, the culture of the business is where the money is. That's where the freedom is. You know, you can either be in business for, uh, to make money or to get wealthy. I want to be in business to get wealthy and wealth is time and money. Okay. And what it gives you is freedom. So if you want financial independence, you want to have freedom here in America, um, or wherever you are in this world, you know, I believe developing leaders is going to be a huge part of that. So Hope this series was great. I've, I've honestly benefited a ton teaching it and going through this. So thank you all for, for listening, being a part of this group, being a part of our community at Move Up. Um, just know that we're here to help you. You know, I have, I have nothing to sell you right now. Um, doing this video, it's, it's purely just to help you. Uh, we believe in value exchange. If we help you in an immense way, we know that it'll come back to us a hundredfold and that's what I believe in. So appreciate you guys. See you on the next video. Peace.